Good morning. Welcome to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Gradick, your host. Delighted to have you with us um, on this Wednesday morning. Uh, we've got a very interesting show lined up for you. Um, we've got somebody who's a familiar face in West Georgia, somebody most everybody knows or certainly has heard of, and that's Mike Dugan. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm do Well, thank you for asking. I'm yeah. doing fine. I've got several issues, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> anyway, Mike is, uh, has served for 10 years, a full decade, mm -hmm. in the Georgia State Senate, rising to the level of majority leader, and uh, it was the 30th Senate District. Now he's a candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives, mm -hmm. District 3. But before we get started as to why he's running, a little of his background, et cetera, a couple of the issues involved, I'd like to take just a minute, because I think it's good education for most everybody, and most everybody doesn't pay close attention to this kind of thing. But what led to the current and the resulting change in the design or, or the boundaries of the 30th Senate, Senate District in the state of Georgia? Yeah. Tell us about the court case and yeah. how that works. So Judge Jones, a federal judge, uh, said that the way the districts were drawn, uh, there were not, and they specifically use these terms in, in, his, in his statement, was there were not enough majority black districts um and there were two that he listed in the senate uh there was i think one in congress and then there was four or five i can't remember off the top of my head in state house so we obviously disagreed with that and there's still an appeal going on on, on that decision but while that appeal is going through we still have to comply mm -hmm. with the the i mean we've got three branches of government for a reason and to do what he wanted to do, we kept the same. The, the number of Republican seats and the number of Democrat seats are still the same. It's just the way that they're drawn to capture what he mandated. They had to ch change their geographic shape. To do that, um, Senator Brass out of Coweta, he was in South Fulton. The part of his district was South Fulton. He had to come out of South Fulton. After all the bit, bits and pieces of it, you still have to be plus or minus 1% in all 56 districts across the, the state. So that comes in the population. He had to take um, a significant chunk of Carroll County, uh, which is, you know, th th that happens. Um, my consternation with that was nobody talked to me about it. Mm -hmm. There were other ways we could have done it to get the numbers where they were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. and and still maintain uh, a, a larger, cohesive Carroll County and was not. Was not this this is a result of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. That's correct. Does the federal government automatically review every state's? No. Uh, and remember was that. Was this a, a suit that was brought by somebody? Yes. Who brought it? Uh, Alpha Phi Alpha uh, Fraternity, Fraternity and NAACP. Really? Okay. Well, uh, we could talk about that for a long time, and but I thought it was good to kind of touch on it just to get a little more education on it. But the the but things you know moving forward, um, you now have declared your candidacy for the U.S. House of Representative, and I'm I'm going to go over after uh, I ask you the big uh, in, in news reporting. There, what five questions? Who, what, when, why, where, and how? You know. So I'm going to ask you the big why question. Why would you want to? You got a great life. You got a beautiful house, beautiful family, everybody around here. You know, you could be reelected, whatever, uh, forever. Why do you want to run for the U.S. House of Representatives and go to the swamp? <laughs> <laughs> well, the real reason I want to do it, you know, you, I have done a decade at the state, and a lot of the calls that I get from constituents coming in are Social Security, their Veterans Affairs, their help with uh, Medicare and Medicaid, uh, their passport issues, their concerns about what's going on at the border, and I know we'll talk about that we'll later. The there, there's, there's concerns about immigration. There's concerns about national security. There's concerns about the economy. And so when I started actually paying attention to what's going on at the federal level with, the, with what the constituents are calling and asking for help with, I'm thinking uh, of the people in this area especially those in the race that are versed on national security i'm the most versed 
Mm-hmm. When you're talking about the economy and the and the impacts of uh, the inflationary period that we're under right now, I've been a businessman for the last 15 years since I retired from the army. When you look at and that was at Ray Lynn. at Ray Lynn, um, and when you look at the ability to actually accomplish stuff, just look at the track record for the last decade in the Senate. And part two on that is a lot of people don't remember, but when I came in, when I was first elected. I said, anticipate me serving about 10 years. And really, it was 11. So I don't I remember to... last week. But, uh, <laughs> um, let, let's, let's dig uh, a little deeper into the, to your background. I know most every, like I said, most everybody knows you and uh, around here anyway. And, but the district is not just around here. It's, That's right. Uh, it's huge. It, it's a large district, but the main population is Carroll, Calida, and Fayette County, I believe. Um, I'm gonna, I have to. I have to kind of weave this in here. So, so mm-hmm. uh, you're a graduate of Bowden High School, mm-hmm. and you Go played right football up. and ran track. Yeah, we didn't win state when I was there. No, but we've run one state twice. We saw you at the uh, parade last Saturday. I mean, that's got to be a pretty big deal for you to know that your team quote unquote uh one state back to back yeah it was and i was glad to, got to be there it's exciting what i really really liked about the parade mm-hmm. it wasn't just the football team that they showcased yes. it, it was the basketball team from when i was in high school there the girls basketball team it was i think that was 78 yeah, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. i was yeah. a freshman yeah um you know it was all those different state champions and bowden's got a proud history so i was glad to they included them in the parade well, after that, you went to UWG. Uh, at that time, was it still? It was it was state, a college. It was West Georgia College. Mm-hmm. Got a BA in history. Then you enlisted in the Army. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, why? Why did you join the Army? I felt like that I owed something. You know, a lot of people enlist because of that reason. I came out. You know, I knew I was going to go into a career. I, I did not anticipate the military being that career. Really? No. No, I was going to go in and do my – at that point, it was just a two-year enlistment. Uh, two-year enlistment and get out and, as my mom used to word it, get a real job. And there was a one day I was down there at work, and one of our senior NCOs, a, a, a first sergeant, came and says, how would you like to be an officer? And I'm thinking, I have not seen an officer sleep in this motor pool yet. Well, I said, tell me more. <laughs> and they said they would send me back to school through ROTC, get commissioned, and, and come back in a, as an officer. So I got to pick where I wanted to go to school. I had a choice of any school in, in the nation, and I came back to West Georgia. Um, great education, um, great programs that, of study, and my fiance were all here. Was that um, was that when you got your master's degree? Or, or yes, it was. Okay, so you came back and they paid for the master's degree. Um, they paid me one hundred ten dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Go to college. It, it was the equivalent to jump pay at the time. <laughs> uh, you got a master's degree in organizational development. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, hopefully someday you can help me. What, what, what is business organization? consulting? <laughs> yeah. What is organization? Yeah. Uh, but you, so you, now you're in service as a second lieutenant in the infantry, uh, in the U.S. Army, and then for some reason you decided you wanted to jump out of airplanes, correct? And you became a master paratrooper. Mm-hmm. What 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 led you to that? I mean, that's pretty. I don't big. like flying. You don't like flying. <laughs> that's a good answer. Um, here's kind of the the core of it, though. You 20 year career. You were deployed to more than 32 countries, including hostile fire departments in Bosnia, Iraq, and Afghanistan before retiring as a lieutenant colonel in 2008. A pretty distinguished, uh, uh, a lot of veterans don't talk much about their career, mm-hmm. certainly not in detail, but uh, I imagine you saw things the rest of us can't even, mm-hmm. like I say, imagine or, or really comprehend. And so, you shouldn't have to. Yeah. Okay. Um then you came back here and you went to work for Ray Lynn, um, and um, and then uh, ran for Senate and was elected in 2013. Um, became the floor leader, then the majority leader, served on the uh, chairman of the Veterans Military and Homeland Security, which seemed logical, uh, uh, committee. <clears throat> 
and vice chair of economic development tourism, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, is ex officio public safety member of the rules and appropriations committee. And along the way, at school, you said you met your wife, Missy, and while y'all were undergrads, and then she followed you around the world. Mm -hmm. She did. She stayed with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Y'all had a, a couple of uh, couple of kids, correct? We, um, Megan and Bo. Yeah. Um, Megan, our daughter, is uh, just got married a, a year or so ago, so we're, we're proud of her and, and love her husband. And then Bo and his wife, Sarah, have our only grandchild so far, a little girl named Nora, and they live in a – Birmingham, England. He's in the really. He, he's in the ministry there. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lee. Well, let's get him in. I'll get interview <laughs> him. Uh, and then Missy um, uh, is also uh, uh, in leadership with the Boys and Girls Club uh -huh. of America. Uh, her, her work is in Atlanta, pretty much. It's um. She has an office in Atlanta and uh, one in Washington. She goes to Washington like three days a month. Really? Mm -hmm. So this will work out. <laughs> You get well, elected. I hope, to, I hope I get to see her more than three days a month. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if she's a, oh, yeah. oh, three days a month. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a, it's a huge uh, change in uh, logistics, if you will, yeah. when, you, when you're when you elected to the U.S. Congress. It's a, it's a big deal. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll jump into some of the issues. We're very pleased to have in studio Mike Dugan, former Georgia State Senator, the 30th District, now a candidate for the U.S. House of Rep. Senatives District 3. We'll be back with more after this. Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating over 61 years. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us on the mountain to see our mission and vision in action. Academic excellence, a faith-based environment, and dynamic opportunities are just a few of the reasons our families choose Oak Mountain Academy. Academic scholarships and tuition assistance are available. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Good morning. Welcome back to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Reddick, your host. Delighted to have you with us. We have Mike Dugan in the studio. He's been in the studio several times before as a Georgia State Senator, but now he's a candidate for the U.S. House, District 3. Um, this is something that has, uh, I think, now achieved, uh, uh, the topic has achieved the attention of pretty much everybody. It's on everybody's radar now. Uh, which is the open border crisis, and uh, for a while it, people were hesitant to use the word crisis, but not anymore. We've got 100,000-plus people, males mainly, dying of fentanyl annually. We've got 100,000 children who are missing, who no, mo most likely have fallen into some sort of child sex trafficking, which is horrific. We've got 26,000 Chinese coming across the country on the open border, yeah, the House voted H.R. 2 in last May, and the Senate compromise seems to be going nowhere. What what should be done? I understand you've been there and seen it firsthand. Yeah, it, as you know, I was I was there last week. Uh, we have some guardsmen that are deployed down there uh, from Georgia, and so I went down to visit them. The people often refer to it as an immigration crisis. This is a national defense crisis. It's not only for um, some control of the amounts of people that are coming over, like the Customs and Border Patrol, they have the responsibility for, for patrolling that border. Now, they have the guardsmen down there in support. And don't want to get too wonky, but guardsmen are either Title 10 or Title 32. Title 32 is like when they're here working in the state and they're a uh, hurricane, tornado, and, the, and um, riots, and they're, they're doing a law enforcement type role then they can do a law enforcement type role when they're deployed to, from georgia to texas they're title 10 that means they've been federalized 
federal military troops cannot do law enforcement on U.S. soil. So they can be in support of law enforcement, but they cannot be active in, in conducting law enforcement type operations. So they're supporting the Customs and Border Patrol, but because so many people are coming across, active border agents are being pulled into the in-processing stations to process those people that are coming through, which means there's less active Border Patrol people on the borders, which means there's more people coming through, so you get this ever-increasing crisis. Now, the coyotes, that not the canines, but the, the yeah. people that are pushing across, what I've learned from this is they're doing a diversionary tactic on this. Mm -hmm. They're sending the huge waves, and they're making money off this. A lot of money. Um, of people this way, and then the ones you're talking about, they're going a different direction in a smaller group, whether that's um, smuggling, um, and there's been a huge growth of what appear to be Chinese mm -hmm. military-aged males coming across. Yeah, no, there's concerning. Um, um, there's a, a fair number of those from the African continent coming mm -hmm. across, and there are a fair number of what you would call Eastern Europeans coming mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. that are not what you would see with the traditional groups of, uh, of those coming from uh, Central and South America up the line. So th that is a concern. The drugs that you're, that you're talking about coming across there, that's not just staying in Texas. That's if you talk to the law enforcement here, you talk to Joel or Terry, they'll tell you the the amount of concern they have about fentanyl is huge coming from China. China's working with the cartels. cartels. The yeah. cartels are hiring the coyotes and going through this whole process. So this is an active incursion by foreign entities that are not friends, not allies of the U.S. to bring debilitating stuff across our borders. Worst case scenario, based upon, in part, your military background, what you've seen, this could lead to, to multiple terrorist attacks, to, to violence in our nation from people who came across that we have no idea who and what they were. I mean, is that an overstatement? No. That may be an understatement. Really? It's a significant concern to a lot of people right now. Where are these going? Where not... Everybody's so focused on this mass, and rightfully so. They're not paying attention to what's in the, the other hand. It's like a, a magic trick going on here. Where are these people going? Well, the, you know, you know, the numbers vary. Of course, you know, we see anywhere from eight to twelve million, you know, immigrants allegedly. Uh, you talk about f tens of thousands of gotaways, and then the ones they don't even know about. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, being a little bit cynical. You know, I know when we go to the airport, we got to go through all this check. But when you say they're being processed at the border, what does that mean? What's processing look like? Well, they're, first, they're, they are separated. Uh, so um, women with small children under the age of go in this area. Women without small children or young women go in this one. Uh, males at a certain age go in this one and then other ones go here and then they're, they're put in big lines and then they come through and they're checking for their health they're they're checking for uh, do we have criminals that have been sent back that are trying to cross back uh through there's a whole checklist of stuff that they they have to to discern from these people in a um in a finite amount of time really um and then they move forward now this was a Southern state issue, almost an R issue versus a D issue mm -hmm. until Chicago and New York mm -hmm. and some of these other cities got the ability to start sharing the mm -hmm. burden of uh, the, the influx of people. They, coming they don't use the term sanctuary cities anymore. No, no. <laughs> so it, there is potential here for there to be a bipartisan resolution to actually accomplish something about our southern border. If everybody's got shared pain in this, which is what's going on now, and we should have done it sooner. Let me insert a question. I was uh, I had the privilege one time, one of your, if you're elected, uh, one of the former U.S. House reps for this district, Dr. Phil Gingrey, mm -hmm. and we were on stage regarding Obamacare. And a friend of mine actually asked him from the audience, he said, you know, we need more bipartisanship, and uh, why can't you, you guys go get along up there and get something done? And Dr. Gingrey, without, without hesitation, and this was, you know, 10 decade or more ago, he said, you can't negotiate with these people. The, the hardcore Democrat, progressive, and he didn't hesitate. He said, you just can't do it. And 
and are you really I'm, I'm inserting a whole nother topic here mm -hmm. so forgive me but you may not you may find bipartisanship in washington is not like bipartisanship in uh, atlanta and bipartisanship in washington is not the entire democratic caucus coming across it's seven of them if you can just with the numbers we have right now if you can just get a small number to come across in in both chambers you can get bills passed that's that's bipartisanship so now do i think it's gonna be mr smith going to washington uh, for the younger crowd out there it's a great movie um <laughs> no no yeah. but uh i do have a a history now of identifying issues working and developing solutions and getting a coalition to get behind it and pass them uh a, a lot of us particularly i guess of my age group uh uh, who uh, old enough to remember our elementary school years and the, and the threat of nuclear war. Now that term has been bandied about a while. With your knowledge of the, of the Middle East and, you know, our troops in Iraq and Syria being uh, attacked, um, how volatile is not only is the world is in the Middle East with the horrible horrific attack of Hamas uh, on October 7th uh, into Israel and, and, of course, the Ukraine war. How volatile is the geopolitical situation now? Volatile. You know, Dr. Gingrey had thought negotiating with Democrats was tough, trying to negotiate with, with that part of the world. It's, it's extremely tough. So, yes, I, I did do um, a, two little trips over to Iraq, but what is not on that bio is for the— my last year and a half, I spent a substantial amount of time in Israel. Mm. That was where I was sent to go for what I was supposed to be doing with the military at the time. So uh, have a distinct understanding of Hezbollah and Hamas. Um, matter of fact, spent a little time down near Gaza. Um, it is a convoluted, historically dysfunctional region of the world. This is not a new phenomenon. The things that are different now is the capability of the weapons that they have in their possessions that make it extremely scary. Um, yeah, the Ukrainians and the Russians have a long history of not caring for each other. Um, and then uh, the Ukrainians were subjugated for a long time under the, the communist period. And mm -hmm. uh, 1921. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that they don't like each other. Well, we mentioned uh, one former congressman from this area, another former congressman from this area, Newt Gingrich, mm -hmm. um, talked many years ago. He was really one of the first to talk about an EMP, an electromagnetic mm -hmm. pulse in the atmosphere of a nuclear weapon. Warfare, uh, and certainly you know a bazillion times more than I do about it than, uh, than I do, but um, it's become war of drones and surgical strikes and... Uh, cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do you ever think about uh, what uh, an, another world war would look like? Yes, um, it wouldn't. I think it's a combination of, of smaller things of what you just talked about. So, am I'm worried about uh, what you see in the movies? Hundreds of intercontinental ballistic missiles mm -hmm. coming over. That is not my biggest concern. Yeah. My biggest concern is we have um, doled out a lot of the ability to produce um, the major facets of our national security to worlds that are not, or nations that are not friendly to us. Like, I know it's your phone there. Mm -hmm. A lot of the materials that go into producing China. That, China. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the uh, materials that go in for our transformers all around the country, China. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not as if we don't have the ability to do it here. We just choose not to. Mm -hmm. And for the life of me, I can't understand why we're abdicating our responsibility to our nation, and whether it be a, a whole litany of reasons, but security being a, a preeminent one. Um, why are we giving that to the communists the, that admit they don't like us? Yeah. Our guest this morning is Mike Dugan, former Georgia State Senator, 30th District. We're going to run out of time, so uh, we're on Facebook Live. Also, candidate for U.S. House District 3. We'll be back with more after this.
The AP Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined advanced placement curriculum track to earn a series of distinctions upon graduation. This journey enables academically prepared students to pursue college level studies throughout 17 AP courses in five subject categories while enrolled at OMA. I'm Patrick Uran, Head of School, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Welcome back. We're going to run through a couple of questions real quick um, due to the sake of time. For in the Georgia um, State uh, Assembly, um, Georgia budget. I understand uh, you have to, the Constitution says you have to balance the budget. Mm -hmm. U.S. Constitution or, or the federal budget doesn't have to be balanced. It doesn't. How are you going to live with that? <laughs> what bothers me as much as that is when was the last time they actually had a budget? Yeah, this continuing resolution is a scam. Yes. Big so, time. And any freshman congressman going up there saying, I'm going to fix that my first term is, is just talking. Because you know out of 435, that's not going to happen. But that's what I'm going to push for. Last Friday, uh, Biden in a fiery speech said, MAGA Republicans are a threat to democracy. Trying to remove your political opponent from the ballot and having him in prison, how is that not a threat to democracy? See, I don't... <laughs> I don't understand how that can hold up in the court system to remove him from the ballot. Mm. What they are charging him with and the justification for removing him from the ballot, he has not been – I mean, he hadn't even gone to trial for something like that. He hadn't been charged. Um, so that's, that's wishful thinking on some people's parts, but I don't see it holding up. Of course, I always like to point out that democracy, as you know, being a history major, is, is not in the Constitution. It's a republic. The, yeah, exactly. The Democratic Republic. Okay, you meet somebody at the Bowden Parade or, um, you know, downtown somewhere or in Meriwether County or Noonan or wherever you may be, and they say, who are you? And you say, I'm Mike Dugan. And they say, why should I vote for you? And so you got 60 seconds. I'll try to do it in, in 30 because I know we're up against the clock here. <laughs> okay. So if you look at the record, I've got over 30 years of service, either to the nation or to the state, uh, but it, it is a life filled with service. My family, the entire family's a life filled with service. If you look at the issues, and we talked, to, we opened up the show with this about having the most impact on, on Georgians and Americans right now. Our national security, our economy, it's been miserable under the Biden administration. And actually, public safety fits into that as well. And they all kind of tie in together. And I'm the one with the most experience to do this. I'm the one with the, the expertise to do this. And I'm the one with the maturity level to actually accomplish something. And I have the track record to prove it. And if people want to learn more about Mike Dugan for Congress, how should they go about it? Uh, go to Mike Dugan for Congress. Oh. Well, dot com. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mike Dugan, uh, thank you for coming in. And uh, thank you for listening. We thank our sponsors. So, remember, go out and make it a great day. You're in tune to WLBB Carrollton.